Hello and welcome to another episode of the Sharp Talk Podcast. I'm Tom, a.k.a. Tom Hosting Outdoors on YouTube and Instagram. Today I'm joined by my co-host Alex, who is um, at Alex's Knife Box on YouTube and at Alex underscore Knife Box on Instagram. We also have Gerald with us today, who is Outpost76 on YouTube and Instagram. So here we are back after about a month or so of being away. Life kept getting in the way every time we tried to record an episode. Um, but here we are, ready for another one. We I know we missed a lot of news um, in the past month or so, mainly being SHOT Show, which is, I think, our main topic today. Uh, but Alex has got some new knives to show off, too, and uh, should be a pretty good episode. So, as always, guys, let's kind of get into uh, what are you guys carrying today? Alex, G? Dude, absolutely nothing changed since last time. Nothing? You, you, you're, what are you carrying today, though? Still the still the Demco. Yeah. I got to pick one of them things up. Yeah, you do. Either that or, I don't know, I don't want the cold steel version, honestly. Junk. The only, the only bad thing about the cold steel version is I've sharpened two of them for other people now. And both of them were thirty thousandths behind the edge at twenty degrees per side, oh for like from the factory. Yeah, no thanks. I'll I'll just you save know. up and buy one of the actual mid techs. And now mine, I I don't know. I've sharpened it. I don't know six or seven times. It's at fifteen degrees per side, and it's like twenty thousandths behind the edge. See, that's that's much better. Even then, if if I got the cold steel one, I'd probably send it out to Brian for a. Uh, Oh, yeah, definitely. Right off the rip. Um, honestly, for on my days off, I don't really carry much. Normally, if I'm here at the house, I, I just pick a knife if I need it. But what I've been carrying most of the time is still the 940-1. I don't know. For, for the uses I have, this seems to be working out great. I'm going to have to uh, eventually get it reground. I know that for, for a fact. But what do you got, Alex? Uh, today I'm carrying the new knife I just purchased. This is the JD Van Deventer Full Dress Gold from the good old South Africa. It's got an extremely tight herringbone Damascus with polished uh, flats. It's got Timascus pivot colors and bolsters, Timascus clip, Timascus gear pattern backspacer, and some good old Westinghouse micarta. So, pretty sweet. It's a gorgeous knife. My first, man. yeah, it's my first full dress knife. Uh, credit to that's not a knife on Instagram, my buddy Russell, for letting this beauty go to me at a killer, killer deal. Things badass. Do you know what's the? Oh yeah, you said it was the herringbone Damascus. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah, it's sweet. All right, what's new? I, well, I guess Gerald said he doesn't have anything new, right? Nope. We're just gonna... just a bunch of loners from people. That's it. Yep. Let me show off my my one new and one loner uh, before Alex gets into his his whole list. <laughs> so what I got new is see, look, I figured out how to make the screen real big for for me for the the stream watching. I got the uh, limited edition nine forty two thousand one titanium and uh, red accents in the back and on the thumb studs. Like I was saying before the stream started, this is pretty much the best 940 or best Benchmade I've ever seen uh, as far as quality goes. It's rock solid, great action, no play whatsoever, dead center, just perfect. Um, and then this is actually on loan from Brian, and I've never had a chance to, to see one of these in person, but this is a, a model I really like, and that's the Olamic uh, oh, Snapper. Oh, there we go. Very cool. And that is a custom regrind, or not regrind, custom reblade by, by Brian. I really, wow. really like this. I don't know if we can get this to focus a little bit better. but Yeah, that's a cool knife, man. I, I've been wanting one of those. I love the, the backspacer that they have in here. Yeah. Cool accents yeah, around the pivot. Beautiful. Damascus inlay. But this is uh, part of his uh, another eight test blades that he sent me for some uh, heat treat testing. 
Nice, man. That actually is a vast improvement on the knife that not a lot of people like anymore, the busker. But it, and coincidentally, it's designed by the same guy. Yeah, like, it looks good. Like, like I like the busker to begin with, and the, I wish he would have sent the original blade with this too because this isn't really a working prototype. Everything's so tight on it, and there's no jimping on it, so I can't really flip it, which sucks. Right. But it, seeing this thing in hand makes me kind of want to get one. But They're not too bad like, as far as price if you go simple. Yeah, you like know? 450 to like 700 Not crazy. Well, I was going to build a full time Ascus uh, show side one with Eugene, and it was going to be about, I think... I don't know about a grand. Yeah, that's see, that's not even that bad, honestly. I mean, it's a lot of money for a knife for a lot of people, right? Um, but you know, it's pretty damn cool. Paul, I don't said... think there's a. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, it's cool. Let's uh, listen to Paul. I was saying, Paul said, "Tom, your hands aren't even that small." I'm disappointed. They actually are. No, they're not. They're not that small. They are. I mean, they're small. Make a fist. They're not that small. Make a fist. Here, we're going to go up to, up to the camera like you do with fish so it makes it look real big. I can still see your face. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> listen, maybe I just have a big head. Uh, I I think that's where the size went. It left your right. hands and went to your forehead. 940. Yeah. Yep. That knife, that knife is so tiny in my hands. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let's continue. What, not, what else? Namaste Texas wanted to see the action on that uh, JD. And the, oh, the steel sure. on that was Herringbone Damascus. So here is the action. Nice and smooth. Glass-like. Beautiful. Yeah, it's... The detent is perfect on it, too. I mean, this knife, like, I don't... I couldn't really find anything wrong with it. Um, I mean, there's even file work on the spine. It's really beautiful. Um, I mean, everything's polished. Every surface is touched. The seam from, like, moving your finger from the Timascus over to the the micarta, you could barely feel anything. It's, I mean, you, you, you can even see, like, just how tight the... Uh, how tight of a job he did on the actual pivot collars Jesus. and he's he's one of the ones that does these really large pivot collars which i really really like so um he did a nice blend of colors it's smooth this pocket clip works really good one hand holster no problem man just pops right in so very nice work as always from jd absolutely what else you got and new, I, Alex? I know you got a long list. Uh, you know, I did get a bunch of new shit. I, I brought a few out. I'm not going to go like I always do and spend a half hour on it. <laughs> I'm just too tired for that today. <laughs> um, I don't think I brought this one out on the show yet, but this is another JD. Uh, this is the EDC, and this one's the bolster lock with the, the tip-up carry clip because he used to do these in tip-down frame lock. So this is a tip-up with a um, bolster lock. Blue carbon fiber, and he anodized uh, the whole thing for me. And um, this knife, actually, interestingly enough, came with a full, kind of like almost polished frame uh, with blue carbon fiber, which was a really nice contrast. But I couldn't stop it from getting uh, fingerprints and little minor scratches on it, so... I sent it out for a spa, and um, it's much better now in this blue kind of rougher finish uh, titanium. Yeah, so, I like that. Yeah, me too. Action is just like the other one um, <clears throat> as far as just drops smooth like glass. That'd be a so, fun one to use and carry on an everyday basis. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Um, let's see, I got an early release on the, uh, 520 from CKF. I'm very happy with this knife. It's got one little thing that I don't like about it. Um, 
but not, none of it has to do with fit and finish. It's just really only the um, the detent's very light on it. Um, the action's nuts, but the detent, I guess, is kind of the idea to be able to let it flip so easily. Um, but it's it's got faster action than even my JD does. Um, so that was kind of an interesting, cool knife. I like the way it, they did it way better than the uh, 23. Paul said the 520 is like if Sin a Sinkovich fucked a Sabenza. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I don't see it, but yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. Um... I got this knife from a French knife maker that actually was recommended to me by one of our listeners. And uh, this is a Romain Bignon. And it's got some crazy orange and black micarta scales. It's a front flipper. And this guy's actually buddies with uh, Philippe Georget. Oh, cool. And when you look at the Philippe Georget design and then this one at a side profile, you can kind of see some similarities there. Yeah, definitely. So, very cool. No pocket clip on this guy, which is one thing I wish it had, but it still works with the clip slip. It's got really nice action and a uh, really nice blade. It's all smudgy. So that's another new acquisition. Uh, this one I just got recently. This is a Medina Custom in razor wire Damascus from uh, Vegas Forge with Westinghouse micarta on the pivot color and the scales, zirconium pocket clip with hidden hardware and bolster zirconium too. Uh, um, it's got the Westy on the backspacer as well. Um, nice knife overall. I, I have a couple little things I want him to fix on it, um, which I won't go over right now. But um, overall, this knife came out really, really nice. Centering is freaking dead on. Um, nice piece from Fernando. We will be doing business again. I don't know if I brought this one out on the show yet, but this is really popular. So here is the Sika Evolution. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, this knife is really, really nice. I've been talking to John Sorensen a lot lately. And, um, man, he did a really, really good job. Embrace yourself, guys, because for those of you that don't like a huge knife, they are coming out with a 3.25-inch version That's what I was later say. this year. So that's coming, um, and it's also going to be available if you're on his books for a full custom. And what it looked like on the smaller version from like the drawings that he had, it misses or they, it gets rid of all of those little finger grooves, which is what I didn't really like about the bigger one. He made yeah. the hand a little bit more neutral. Yeah, and that's funny because that. So when I originally messaged him, is I wanted him to mod this one, mm -hmm. and. Getting rid of the finger grooves was actually the first thing I told him I wanted him to do. Oh, cool. Uh, which kind of separate, it kind of will make it look more like a Strider. I was just going to say it'd make it look Strider ish. <laughs> but, but I, I think it'll be less dependent, at, like, to where your hand has to be to be comfortable. Right now, I can kind of put it in two positions. I can either choke up on it like this. Or I can hold it like this. Yeah. And nothing in between, you know? Yeah. So, uh, but very cool knife. Um, that was, yeah, that's a good one. Um, this is another one that I showed the boys already, but I don't know if I showed it on the podcast. Mm. That's my fully redone uh, Demco 8015, and it's been sculpted. And it's got some blue carbon fiber. Probably can't see it well because the light is crap. Um, and he even sculpted on the back on the gear backspacers. There's some new kind of sculpting shape that he did to it. So he did a lot of extra things on this one to make it kind of special, which I really liked. He anodized the liners blue. Um, 
can't be more happier with that. And then I guess the last one I brought for show because I've talked about it so much. Hell I yeah. finally got a Spectre. So finally got a chance to get one of these. And I had a love-hate relationship with the Holt Spectre because I couldn't acquire one and everybody's trying to rip everybody off when they're selling them. So it just made me a little bit less wanting one for a while. But actually a, a, a buddy of mine I hang out with finally decided to let this go. So I got a V3 Spectre and uh, possibly working on a V4 as well. And this knife is really, 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 really good. Like, I'm very, very impressed with it. I wasn't as impressed with the knife when I first got it. I mean, it was impressive, but it's only basically what I expected it to be, just based on what everybody says about it. But after carrying it quite a bit, like, and actually using it, um, I get it now. I, I really do. There's there's a lot of good here. Is it a twelve hundred dollar knife? Uh, that's kind of hard to say that it's worth that much money. That's what they're going for on the secondary market. But let's say off table price, right? What the maker decided to do with it, which was seven hundred bucks. This is a shitload of knife for seven hundred bucks. It's it's incredible for seven hundred bucks. I still stand so, by saying that is the best knife I've ever handled. It's nice, man. It's Ugh. really, really nice. I'm so sad that they're getting rid of it. Yep. Blade Show. Blade Show is going to be the last one. Yep. And, so, um, and then, like, that's I, why I'm... I wanted to grab one at Blade, but good luck grabbing it at Blade now. Well, we'll see, man. I mean, you never know. You, you just got to get there fast. So, um, but really excellent knife. So those are just a few of the new stuff that I got. Yeah. But if you want to see everything, which you probably won't because I post so slowly, but <laughs> check out my YouTube channel. <laughs> You're doing better than me, man. I'm getting a video turned out like every two to three weeks, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm trying to do them weekly, but it's just right now I got to, I got to, I don't have a whole lot of time. Yeah, so. I hear you. Oh, man. So, yeah. Right. So, with all that Westing being said. Westinghouse kick, you know? Yeah. I'm liking this Westie. This Westie it's stuff pretty, is so cool, it's man. It's pretty stuff, mm -hmm. and it's got a cool history to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hopefully I don't out. die of asbestos. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so ready to get into the main topic of today? Let's go. Okay. So the main topic of today is the SHOT Show knives. Um, I have the SHOT Show 2020 feed pulled up from Knife News. And I feel like we should just kind of go down the list and do some quick reactions to every knife. that cool with you guys? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So not spend like half an hour on each like we normally do. <laughs> All right. One second. Let me get this up. I'm ready to go. Share my screen and everything. All right. You guys good to go there? See everything? Yep. So we talked about all the pre-shot show reveals pretty much. That was like the last episode we did. Um, the pictures weren't up for this yet last time I think we talked. Um, but we do oh, have all the Benchmade releases, pictures. Yeah, so that that Jared uh, Oster is really, really cool. Yeah, I like that. Tengu. Night. Yeah. I really like Jared's work. I think that he makes some badass custom, uh, like, tr modern traditionals. Yeah. Um, what do you guys think about this, though? I think it's really well executed for a production knife. I mean, there's not going to be really... I mean, the only difference from the custom to that is that, you know, the, uh, the, the, the fine touches by hand that he does... Uh, compared to a production knife is the difference you're going to see. Mm. But I think that's a really true to the custom uh, uh, reproduction of it. I yeah. think it's good. He did a good job. Same profile and everything. I, I noticed that the, the Tengu, from, as, a, as a custom knife, he offers in a flipper like this and also a front flipper. 
So when I was right. when I first heard about this model and I hadn't seen any pictures yet, I was really hoping for a Benchmade front flipper, which would have been really cool. Right. But yeah, no, they haven't gotten to that jam yet. No, I don't there's... think they've ever made a front flipper. They have not. Don't worry, they'll get to it like four years down the road when it's not a thing anymore. But yeah. I I do like this one. Uh, I like the little the the touch of the the white G10 shield on the inside yeah. to make it more like a actual traditional. I'm interested to see what the pricing is going to be on this guy. Uh, give me one second. I couple hundred. That. I'm going to say it's a couple hundred bucks, like 220, 250. Yeah, it's a little 220. It's 220. Yep, 220 MSRP, 187. Uh, oh, dude, map. that's good. Yeah, perfect pricing, I think, for what yeah. you're getting. Yeah, Gerald. I like that they're doing something different than what they've been doing forever. Yep. What I forgot to mention, too, it's not an axis lock. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nothing wrong with an axis lock. I just feel like they should branch out a little bit. Right. Yeah, I mean, looking at what they did the past couple of years, that's definitely totally different. I really Which like is it. refreshing, you know? Yes. Now, yeah. the, there is one thing that concerns me is this back of the handle here this is looks like a really sharp corner so when you're going to flip it i wonder how uncomfortable that's going to be we will find out, to find out. My, my, <laughs> my, my shop should be getting them here relatively soon yeah very cool and it is clipless I, like I forgot to say that uh 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 it lost points clipless i don't know if it comes with a i think it comes with a slip a little leather slip. if it comes with a slip that would be pretty compelling it does Oh yeah. There you see. go. Nice little leather slip. Then that's all right. Does the slip have a pocket clip? No. I'm sure you could get a, a clip slip for it. Yeah. That's cool though. I like it. I think we already saw this, the mini bug out. I don't know. I don't remember. What's interesting to me though is that that knife is going to I mean, I'm not saying that nobody's going to like it, but the true like old school you know, traditionalists are not. I, I guarantee you're going to talk smack about it. Yeah, that's whatever. You know, they talk smack about the uh, the damn proper when it came out because it has screws, so it's not a true slip joint. Yeah, whatever. It, and which is an improvement because you can take it apart and clean it. Yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, I know there's those purists out there. So what do you, what do you guys think about the mini bug out? I don't think we got to stay on this one for too long, but uh, I don't care. Yeah, it, I, yeah I, I understand they're going after the market where people can't have over a three inch blade, but dude, the bug out was small enough already. I, mm -hmm. I kind of don't see the point of a smaller one. That's how I feel. I'm curious. I'm, Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, that's fine. <laughs> I, I, I was going to say just like Gerald, I, I thought the, the regular bug out was small enough, you know, like I don't yeah. really think there was like a need for it. I'm curious to see how small it actually is. If it's like mini grip size, I don't know. I feel like the mini grip is, is really small, even for, for tiny hands, Tom. I mean, looking at the dimensions, I believe it is. It's only like a 2.85 inch blade or something like that. 2.82. Yeah, so. See, but I have I have a small Sebenza, which I think is a little bit larger than that. Mm-hmm. But you know what, what I bet you? I bet you it's going to be the size of my small in Kose. It probably is. Real similar. That's what I'm going to think. But one and a half ounces, it's pretty cool. That's they, the only cool thing I see about it. They had, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's stupid light. Um, they had two versions of this, too. They have this orange one with the satin blade, and they also have the all-white handle with the black blade. And, oh, like Stormtrooper or what? Yeah, like a, like a tuxedo version of it. And a lot of people didn't really like that, but I guess, I'm not sure if this is what they were thinking of or this is just another marketing angle for them. Uh, they said that the reason they did that is for, so people can dye the handle any color that they want. Huh, interesting. So you can, you know, that you're not limited to the colors that you can dye it. Yeah, you could do a red dye or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Uh, the Mediator which is really similar to like an auto 940 similar blade is that shape. what it is it's oh a, it is an automatic it's a similar blade shape that you got the reverse tanto with the with the swedge up top mm -hmm. and the handle's a little bit different 
But that's all sculpted G10. Yeah, uh, that's cool. That's not my market. And it's an S90V. That's cool, too. Yeah. I mean, that'd be a nice, like, police carry, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Ben Benchmade autos have never really interested me too much. But no. It, it's got a good size. Thing. They're just, yeah, 3.3 inch blade. That's like a perfect blade, honestly. Well, 3.3 with 2.98 ounces. It's a pretty good uh, weight to size ratio. Yeah, absolutely. Um, is that is that your dog snorting, snoring, Gerald? Always. Yep. <laughs> Our mascot is present. Always. So something you, you'll notice as a theme throughout Benchmade's release is they have a new handle material this year. Uh, CF Elite, which is instead of like a fiberglass reinforced nylon, it's carbon fiber reinforced. Um, yeah. So technically, I guess they call it a carbon fiber G10 blend here on Knife News, but they mm. discontinued the Presidio 2 and then brought the Presidio 2 back out with that handle material. So it drops it almost two ounces. That's pretty good. Um, I had no issue with the normal Presidio 2. I liked it because it was just a, a freaking tank. Right. I don't. I'll have to see this one in hand. I, I feel like it's gonna make it feel like it's underpowered, even though it's not. You know, but I don't know. This one doesn't really sit well with me. Well, it's it's still not my 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 forte or my market, so I can't really comment on it too much. I I don't have a need for a knife like that. Um, I think for like that kind of size and you know, build, I think there's a lot more compelling knives to me than this thing. Yeah. It's not bad looking. I'm not saying that, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's one of those, I'll look at it when I'm shopping or whatever. I'm like, Oh, that's, that's, that's interesting. And then just skip through it. You know? Yeah. I feel you. What do you think about that change, Jerome? I think they should have left it how it was. Yeah. I liked the original one. I, I liked the feeling of, of it being a tank. It's like, it felt like the tank of an Adamus, but it wasn't half a pound, even though it was heavy. <laughs> yeah. And it actually had a blade that could, like, cut things instead of a wedge like the, the Adamus has, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, they did the same thing to the SOCP folder. They got rid of the G10 handles, threw on that CF Elite. And then made it an access lock instead of a liner lock. Still D2. <laughs> I can hear the dog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, can't, I, I, I can't concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. The, I love it. the original one of these didn't last too long. A couple, well, six months maybe. Six to eight months, I think. Um, it was a liner lock. And oh. it... I don't know the the two examples I had in in the shop. The um... <laughs> <laughs> the two examples I had in the shop. Brr. The lock <laughs> the lock stick was terrible. Garbage. Like I I had to use two hands to to move the lock back over. So I'm glad that I went to an access lock. It's still not a folder that I'm interested in, but I think that's an upgrade. Yeah. Uh, the Autocrat, just a G10 uh, scaled OTF. They yep. had that out last year. This is the one. This one has tan G10 now. Not much of a change. Uh, the 940-2001 Osborne, which is the one I showed off earlier. Yeah, I like that one. That's probably one of the knives I, I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, it's kind of plain, but for the people who wanted a titanium 940, there it is. And uh, it feels like a completely different knife, honestly. Yeah. Really solid. I like that. The Gold Class Mini Crooked River. What do you guys think about that? I know you guys are going to hate it, but I like it. I love it. Really? Yes. I just had. <laughs> I, I didn't think you would. It just came into the shop this past week. What a gorgeous knife. Like, it pictures don't really do it justice. Uh, yeah, well, this is a really bad picture because I've seen some videos on it already, and this this doesn't like show it off well, like the contrast between the handle whatsoever. Yeah, 
And I like the, the Raphir uh, Yellow Moon inlays in it. Those look really cool. And in person, those look a little bit better. They're, they're see-through. You can kind of see the liners up underneath of it. And then the like the gold that's outlining this little half circle here, it pops really good because it's yeah. like that, uh, that metal material that they have in there. Yeah. They did a great job on on the one that we had in the sh in the store. Um, perfect blade centering, obviously, no play, great action. And the thing that I completely didn't even think about, it's stupid light because you're replacing the titanium bolsters and you're replacing those, right. those wood inlays with just straight-up carbon fiber. Right. It has to yeah. be, like, just a touch over two and a half ounces, maybe. Yeah, that's, that's a that's a good-looking knife. I, I liked it when I first saw it come out. Um, I don't know if I, I, I'm going to buy one, but I think it's really cool. Uh, and I like the color contrast with it, you know. And I've always liked that knife just for the mere fact that, you know, the, the handle shape and the clip point on it looks freaking awesome. Yep. Absolutely. I think I would prefer to build myself a Damas steel custom shop personally. I was just going to say that. But I think it's really cool, especially for collectors. This is kind of like a really nice, bright and crazy knife. Yeah, for sure. I, that's what, that was my sentiment as well is that I could buy one of these MSRP on this was $800 by the way. Um, yeah. Which is a little, little steep. If a little much. Me. Yeah. Um, I could buy one of these, or I could go <laughs> on to their custom shop, deck it out with carbon fiber, damage steel, what, whatever color accents I want. Uh, you still have the titanium bolster, and you don't get the inlay, but it's three hundred dollars less. Right. Completely maxed out. Right. So, I don't know. What What do you think about this one, Drew? I like that they do the gold class. It it's I mean it's not something for me, but I like that they offer it for people. Yeah. Definitely. This is the I, they've offered a couple in the past years that I I wasn't a huge fan of. the The four A was kind of a cool one. the The gold class uh, propers were kind of cool, but they were crazy expensive. But I think for what you're getting out of this knife, even though it's eight hundred dollars, I think it's reasonably priced compared to the past couple of your models. Yeah, some of them were a little expensive. Yeah, like the proper. There's no way the proper should have been a thousand. Dude, did did you see the new proper? Mm, I don't think so. The new gold class proper. I don't. I heard there was one coming. Oh, I did. It was in our catalog that we just got. When I first saw it, I was like, eh, I don't really like it. When I watched a video on it, I was like, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I like it. It's just it's got a thousand dollar price tag. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, know. it's got gold plated hardware and. Uh, Timascus bolsters and well, I mean at that that so that that pricing territory I played around with a lot, like a thousand bucks, and I think it's really cool too. But I think for the for a thousand bucks, I think it's too steep. I don't. I think it should have been at least like for seven hundred bucks. I would consider something cool like that. I think a thousand when it puts you in a whole new arena yeah. where. Yeah, you know, definitely. Like, I mean, I bought the Spectre for a thousand bucks. You could get a custom, so. a really nice custom Slippy for that price. Yeah. So, uh, go. We'll move on to Kaiser. Uh, this. Oh is, my God! Is this, that right? This is no. I don't. This isn't like a legit website to sell it off of. This is just a site that they had linked for pictures. Um, the inversion. There's no way that fucking thing is going to cost that much, is it? Or no. even close to that? No. Right? Th no, not a chance. I don't know why okay. this site's advertising it as $888, but it's not going to be that expensive. The knife junkie really likes this thing. He likes this? Well, I guess he has he a little bit more. He's thing. a little bit more tactical than me. He's very tactical, but he, you know, he does like Kali and all that stuff. Yeah. So a reverse grip knife was like, he thought this was the coolest thing. I mean, I, I think it's a really cool idea. Don't get me wrong. Like, the idea and concept of this thing is really interesting. Um, I would never buy one. No. No. Ever. Cool milling on the scales. It is very cool. That's... But it when it's closed, it looks like a browse blades to me. Oh, it does. Ew. Yeah, that's just a no-go. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's gonna it's gonna be somebody's gonna like that knife, and I think it's cool, but just not for me. That I like the sham shear. Yeah, that I like. I think that's a cool looking knife. It's, this kind of looks like that uh, CKF that you have, doesn't it? Uh, the Sablia? Yeah. yeah, a little bit. It's yeah, it's got style. the Persian-ish blade style. Still a 35VN titanium. It doesn't do much for me. A lot of the Kaiser stuff doesn't do much for me. Yeah. They need, I mean, to, they need to throw more yeah. color and different handle materials in there. There's too much gray. I kind of feel like Kaiser had their heyday and they're not coming back. Yeah. Like, you know, like they were where they had those little front flippers and all that stuff. Yeah. I do like that it's thumb stud deployment only, though. Yeah, that is cool. Different. I mean, I think it's a good looking knife. It it kind of takes from a few different knives and that I know and kind of puts it all together. Um, so I kind of like that. What's the blade length on this thing? Uh, three and a quarter. Three and a quarter. Yeah, good EDC uh, size. Yeah, that's still. Yeah, it's still a compact knife. Yeah. That one doesn't do much for me though. Uh, this one doesn't have a. The Maestro doesn't have a picture, so we're gonna skip it. The horn. Well, that's different. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of a modified critical. It does. Yep, I can see that. Yeah. The the warney with the I like the holes in the handle. I'm a sucker for that. Yeah, it still doesn't do much for me. I feel like we're gonna we're gonna go through these Kaiser ones real quick. Uh, the Lieb. That doesn't no, that doesn't do anything. No. One fifty four CM J G ten. It's just I don't know. Doesn't a lot of Kaiser just doesn't do anything. I think the only Kaiser that was anything for me to talk about was going to be that inversion. I was yeah. the only thing that was kind of interesting, you know? Right. The rest of these are just so vanilla. I mean, it's good. Like, if, even if you look at this one, right? The sharpening choil is kind of cool looking. It's got thumb studs. It's got a nice blade shape. It's got a nice neutral thin handle. Um, overall, it's a good knife, but... You know, I, it, it's there's nothing about it that says, "Oh my God, I gotta buy it now." You know, it's so yeah. They they all starting to look the same. There's nothing like where I'm like, man, that that's something new. That's something fresh. Check out the glass breaker on the back. I noticed it. <laughs> I didn't want to even say anything about that. No. <laughs> now here's what I've, here's what I've noticed about the past two knives. Re regardless of the price that's showing on the screen, that's obviously not correct. Uh, the model names start with V, so I'm assuming those are part of their Vanguard series. And the yeah. Blade Steel's 154CM. Which is good. Because they were they were VG10 before, correct? Yeah, and then they went to the N690 on some of the Vanguard also. Okay, so if they're changing to 154CM, that makes them a little bit more compelling at, at the price point, I think. Yeah. It, yeah. I mean, they got to try and compete with Civivi and... Uh, oh, who's the other one? Nah. They'll never compete with Civivi. We'll just not say at Civivi. this point. Was this? Yes, yeah, the same knife, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The Justice. The uh, Cape Crusader. Clutch. That's kind of neat. My card inlays yeah. on the titanium. Yeah. That's thirty-five. At least, at least this one isn't all gray. It's still boring to me. Yeah. I don't know. Like. I don't think their blade finishes are that great either. But the bolster lock on that thing's pretty cool. I didn't even notice that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. But their, I think their blade finishes lack so far behind Wii and especially Riot. They I just, think Riot's in a whole different class, man. Oh yeah. I just I hate when companies do this where where you go from the the primary bevel to the flat. And it looks all yeah. rounded off. It's just careless. Yeah. That should be a sharp transition. Yep. Uh, the assassin. No. That looks a lot like Look. your uh, poltergeist. Oh, yeah. Huh? Real similar. But poltergeist looks way better, though. Yeah. I wonder if this... Who's the designer on this? Carlos Elsner. 
yeah, that doesn't that combines the handle of the other knife that we saw earlier with like a poltergeist blade. <laughs> yep. Moving right along. The jungas? No. What's up with all the, like the Bowie shaped blades? I don't know. It looks like part of the Vanguard series as well. I don't know. There's too many left. You just want to skip the rest of, the rest yeah, of Kaiser? Yeah, let's, okay. let's skip Kaiser, dude. Sorry, I, Kaiser. I actually yeah, well, did a whenever... whole thing of, uh, of notes of what I liked on SHOT Show. I picked some good ones, but I left the damn notes at work. There you go. <laughs> so. Um, Emerson, looks like we got a, a mini sheepdog. Uh, I don't know if there's a market for it that exists, honestly. Yeah, I think Emerson. Emerson still has like their core fan base, but I think that they're kind of getting left in the dust now. Yeah. And that looks like a CQC seven flipper. They're trying to get back into that market. I think yep. they're like three years too late, though. Yep. Uh, we surprisingly, guys, I was actually most excited about Wii stuff this <laughs> year. <laughs> uh, this was really really cool. It's a Snex Tan design. Uh, you guys remember, like, he did a, a collab with uh, uh, Hoback with the Busker or mm -hmm. Buster or whatever. This is kind of like a continuation of that, but a little bit smaller. Super, super cool. Yeah, I that's... really like this. I like this a lot. Yep. So is it just the Mini Buster? Is that all they're, they're releasing? Or are they releasing a full-size one, too? I think it's only going to be the mini as far as I understand. Okay. But uh, very, very cool. I love that. It, it looks better than the Hoback one for me. Even the, the mini is a 3.4 inch blade. Jesus. Yeah. Was the original well, just that, giant? Yeah, it was like 4 inches or something like oh, that. Okay, gotcha. 20 so, CV. I like the handle milling on it. I like that the grinds are pretty much full flat grinds. Yeah, and you know the real Buster uh, looks more like this one than the Hoback collab. Okay, cool. So, so they did a really good job. I'm very proud of them there. What do you think about that one, G? He's. Uh, I like the design. A... It's just awful small. Listen, for people with hands like mine, that's perfect. Three point <laughs> four. That's pretty good. That's a good uh, EDC. Listen, we we don't all have gorilla hands. Oh, cool. Ferrum Forge. Yay. Yay. It looks like all the other ones. Yep. It's, they all look the exact same. Like an archbishop. Yep. I don't like it, but it, at least it's a, it's a <clears throat> Civivi thing, so if people want a Ferrum Forge design at a low price point, there you go. Yep. Uh, D2, so... Ugh. What do you guys Yay. think about the ben Wii banter. banter? I like it. I think that's I like super it. cool. Yeah, I do too. It's probably I probably like it more because I really like Ben. Yeah. Uh, but he did design like a nice little, almost kind of like a Kephart design blade, which I really like. Um, just a simple handle. It doesn't have to have all these crazy corners and all this crap. Mm -hmm. You know, it just can be a nice basic knife. And, um, you know, you always like the knife where you can reach almost to the tip with his finger on it. Yep. So that does exactly that. So cool design from Ben. For anyone that didn't know, when we, when he says Ben, he's referring to uh, Ben Peterson from the Blade HQ videos. Um, they, I think we basically let him design a knife, and he incorporated everything that he liked in a knife into this. He's got the Ben Blue. He's got the – it's a 2.9-inch drop point blade, S35VN. Liner lock, thumb stud, just a really basic, like, work knife. <clears throat> Something that's just, you know, really simple. And it's priced really well, too. What was the price on it? I think it's just a hair over 100 bucks. Oh, cool. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. What do you think, G? Are you going to pick up one of those? <laughs> I actually do like it. Yeah. It's yeah. small. I mean, if I picked up something like that, it'd definitely be like a travel type knife for me, or or something like that. It, it wouldn't be. Wouldn't be something you carry to work every day. Well, I mean, I I, I am gonna do. I did trade for a little native. 
So I am going to do that for a month at work to see if I can do a tiny knife. <laughs> That's real tiny. Move. So you never know, but I, I I I do like that one, and I like blue. So yeah. Uh, Paul says Ben wanted people to customize it too, and that that does it's a pretty blank canvas for customization. Yeah, for sure. I could see all sorts of cool scales coming out for that eventually, and anno on the on the lock side. All right, now you get into the the crazy full dress wheeze. I know that they do this. They, they release two or three models like that every year. I'm pretty sure. Uh, the Boreas. Um, 3.9 inch damage steel blade. Handle was uh, like a skeletal uh, Timascus. Alex, this is more your speed. What, what do you think about this? Uh, I could do without the, the skeleton looking frame. I mean, it's, it's a lot of really fancy materials, but the knife is not that cool to me. You don't think so? No, I mean... The, here's what's cool about it. It shows off like their machining capabilities, but that's not a knife that I really like the way it looks. It's just, it's very interesting and it shows off, you know, like I said, like what they can do. Yeah, for sure. I think it kind of looks like the Reich knives that have like the skeleton look to them. Yeah, the alien. Yeah, I don't, like the knife itself is very, very impressive. It's not a design that I personally like but uh just showing what they're capable of like you said it's very impressive yeah they even did like a multi-piece construction like the the new jack uh did where like they have part of the blade bolted to the, like the actual blade mm -hmm. itself oh i didn't see that yeah it's kind of interesting that's cool i i know this is a, a knife that g's gonna love <laughs> <laughs> right Dude, look all, all i all I can say positive about it is I, I, I like the blade shape. That's about it. Yeah. yeah. I can... Other than that, I'm just like, eh. <laughs> Paul says it looks like Isham's cousin designed it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Boreas. So this That's one's better. more sculpted uh, titanium with some cool milling in it. Carbon fiber. The Jaga. The Jaga. You like the Isn't Jaga? It? No, the the names are underneath the picks, oh. or the, on top. I'm sorry. No, underneath. So yeah, it's the Jaga. I like oh. the Jaga better. Yeah, my bad. You like the Jaga more? I like the Jaga better. That's cool. I like the blade shape on this one a little bit more. Yeah. With the nice swedge up top. Yep. Cool clip. Uh, you know, it's still not a knife I'm gonna buy, but no. it's cool. Loken. That kind of looks wow, a lot how like... How many of these like, weird things do they do? <laughs> three or four. A lot. <laughs> Jeez, man. Loken's cool. The Opalin. That one's that one's crazy. That one, actually, I like. Yeah, I like that damage steel pattern. I like the way the handle is done. Yeah. It's kind of cool. It's bright. Yeah. Super bright. Still wouldn't buy it, but... What about... Which one would this be then? The the Gava. That one I think is cool. That kind of it reminds me of your uh, your fifth twenty kind of in the in the handle. Uh, kind of. I mean, it's it's kind of interesting it's looking. It's different. But that's a uh, BRR knives uh, from Poland. That's one of his designs. Okay, cool. So it's a remake of a custom that already exists. I do like that. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I'm not too interested in those. Those look like garbage. The mini synergy. Did that sell well for them last year? Um, I don't know, but I'm still planning to buy a, like one of those full dress ones. Oh, really? Yeah, I think I'm gonna. Well, I don't, I don't. Yeah, you know, so I was kind of stuck between the carbon fiber insert mm -hmm. and the entirely just plain milled titanium. And I think I'm going to go for a plain milled titanium one. I think that's because I really like that knife. It's the only Wii knife that I'm like, ah, that's so cool. Yeah, it's different. It's something that they don't really, they haven't done too many integrals. And it's a Wii knife that is like a Wii design. You know, it's not like a ripoff of anything, it doesn't look like anything else. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's I, a really cool knife. I don't like the Tonto on this one. Tonto's it, it's always it always amazes me when a company brings out a knife specifically as a Tonto. Yeah. Because you got to realize that Tontos don't sell as well as like a drop point or a spear pointer. Well, the big one comes in both. Yeah. I mean, at least offer it in both. Right. Oh, well. The Ovoid. Oh, no. I was going to say, are you going to Ovoid that one? <laughs> <laughs> it kind of looks like, do you guys remember like mm, three or four years ago when the... Uh, Paragon Warlocks were really popular. Oh yeah, it kind of has like a, one. A, a similar handle handle shape to that. Yeah, that was a really cool design. The way the handles split. Yeah, it was pretty interesting. He's still making something like that, oh, but cool. I think he calls it something else. But it's yeah, I I don't know, man. If you were to pull that out of your pocket at work and we were coworkers and you like pull this thing out to cut some, I'd be like, the first thing I would say is, what the fuck is that? <laughs> It doesn't look comfortable in the slightest. I don't know if it doesn't look comfortable. It just looks weird. Yeah. It looks weird. You know, like the blade shape's okay, but the handle looks just like, looks like a leaf. And they're going to be expensive. They have to be with all that milled titanium. Nah. Yeah. We Wii's doing pretty good with pricing, man. Oh. Like, the for example, that, that Synergy I want to buy. Mm-hmm. The way the the let's say you get it fully decked out with the carbon fiber inserts that are on both sides, right? It's on even on the lock side they insert carbon fiber. Things like six hundred and twenty five bucks with damascus steel. It's got a Timascus pivot collar. Yeah, and it's got fully milled handles, damascus steel. I mean, dude, that's that's killer cheap for those kind of materials, you know? Yeah, it's not not too bad at all. They do a good job. I I would I bet you that knife's gonna be two hundred bucks. I was thinking two fifty. Even I think two hundred. Even two hundred dollars is a lot for that. It is. The the blade's only one point six three inches. That's perfect for you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> That'd be like full size to you, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's a full size knife, man. Uh, Jesus. what's that below? The pier. I forget who. Oh yeah, that's who makes this one. That's the same guy who makes the uh, the G five metamorph. I was just gonna say, does this remind? you? This is deja vu for me. Yeah, it, it oh stop just, heel. It just looks just like a a metamorph. Yeah, except it's not a front flipper. It's really cool. I like that t the one on the very top. Yeah, me too. I like that, and I like the the all black one. Actually, looks cool. Surprisingly. Yeah. I don't normally like uh, black blades. I really wish that this guy, he's, he's not a knife maker. He's just more or less a designer. And he's done a Michael Zeba one too, which was pretty cool, mm, cool. Um, back in the day. But um, I really wish he designed more knives. I don't know if they're just not kind of manufacturers or makers aren't picking up on them, but I, I like his style. He's got, it's unique. I'll give him that. Yeah. Oh. Uh... Fixed blades don't really interest me too much, especially with finger grooves like that. Yeah. Like the rest is Yeah, just they're like... doing a lot of fixed blade stuff. Now, this Roman thing. The Roman. This thing, I'm sorry, guys, but it's an abortion. <laughs> that thing's, I don't know how it made it to full production. And that when the, you see the SHOT Show video of the guy showing it off, mm -hmm. he seems to really like it. And I'm like, what is that thing on the back, man? Like, what is that? That's the nutsack. Bro, it's so weird. I, I, I don't know if it's supposed to be a skull crusher or a counterweight or what the hell that thing's supposed to be, but it, it doesn't belong there. As a matter of fact, if that if I had that knife, I would just break that thing off. You know what it looks like? You ever seen the guys that throw on uh, truck nuts on their the hitch of their truck? That's like what, that's yeah. like what they did to this knife. Like, we got to make this thing a little bit more manly. We're going to make knife nuts and throw it on the back. Uh yeah, but it's it's terrible, man. It's, it's something. And it it's it says to be it's modeled after the ancient Greek friction folders. Uh, whatever. Leon, Leon Ma. Ma. I like Leon Ma. Yeah, he's pretty decent. The eighteen. Let's see what the eighteen is. 
sculpted titanium, nasty spear point blade with a giant swedge. He does cool blade designs. Uh, this one's an S90V. Yeah, that's nice. Um, no sharpening choil, though. Yeah. That part it's going to have a flared heel. And it's an integral. Okay. I can't imagine these are going anywhere south of $400. I hope less than that. I wouldn't pay that much for that, but but it is cool. Yeah. I, I kind of like that, and it's got the the uh, clip with like the little ball bearing on the end. Yeah, the ceramic ball. Yeah, I like that. The blade is really cool. Yeah, I like that blade shape a lot. And I, as always, these are all Riot builds. So Dude, if we, we're going to have to go faster than this, though, if we if we go through fucking yeah. all these knives. We're working on it. Uh, what was this one? Another cool blade shape. I like the way that he integrated the micarta in there. Yep, the GSD V2. The fuller doesn't make sense. No, I don't. Yeah, I, I like the blade. I don't like the handle. Yeah. It's a bolster lock. That's cool. Uh, integral bolster lock. That's no, it's super actually, cool. It's, it's two-piece construction. It just looks integral. Is it? Yeah. Oh. Wow. Okay, that, so it's a sandwich construction. Nice looking. Is yeah. this supposed to be like one of his things where it's supposed to look like a traditional, but it's not? I don't know. I think that's what the GSD was. Yeah. T1. I hate when makers name knives after knives that are already out, like the Kaiser T1. Yeah. It's stupid. Uh, cool, but nothing special to yeah. me. The Japanese Tonto. What is that? Burlap Micarta? Yep. Yeah, don't really like that one either. Um, yeah, as Paul says not many of his knives go under $400. He says he has to have material shipped from the U.S. to China and back. Yeah, that's what he says. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Um, is there a new a new cuff line? There is the cuff EDC. Okay. It should be a little bit cheaper. Um, it's got the same handle like uh, construction as like a Strider. I don't know if they'll show it in the picture. Does it still here. have that 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 the dick on top? It does oh not. no, he got rid of it. He got Thank rid of the God. Dick. Um, now I like the knife comes in G10 or carbon fiber, and this one, instead of being M390, is LMAX this year. Oh, that's cool. Oh, and here's the handle material, or handle construction, just like a Strider. That's cool, too. I like that. I like that knife. Me yeah, too. that's a cool knife. I always like knives like this that have the cutting edge lower than what the handle is. Yeah. I dig that. On to the next. Uh, the FD EDC. This one is also LMAX. Oh, it's the field duty. It's a smaller field duty. Okay, next. <laughs> <laughs> Alex is not impressed. No. A lot of his knives it'd are starting be to look nice, It'd be nice to see if they're doing the LMAX right. Yeah. Yeah. That's the first time I think they've used LMAX. This is cool. Um, he's saying this comes in S30V. I don't know why he would go with S30V, but whatever. I don't know. A lot of his designs start to look the same. Yep. And he's got a Lanny V2 with S30V. I think what he's trying to do with the S30V was getting prices down. Price down. Yep. Do we even want to get into Fox or Lion Steel? Uh, you know what? We can get into Fox because there was a couple things that good or bad we could talk about. The Nauta? <laughs> <laughs> <Dog>. <laughs> Yeah. Chance I'm gonna buy that. No. Cool. Um. Cool blade finishes on these though. Yeah. Blade steel request was German made 420C. Ew. That's all they're being made out of. 420 Next. carbon. Ugh. Yep. Pass. It's probably harder than the M390, though. Uh, fixed blade pass. Yep. Yep. With a, with a nasty grind on it. That looks disgusting. Oh, the radius. Uh, so this this was the knife that I was going to mention. This thing, I think, won some kind of award for, like, innovative design or something like that. 
But, uh, I mean, it's a good idea, don't get me wrong. But it's not really, like, useful. Yeah, I agree. Like, it doesn't do, it doesn't fix a problem. You know, like, there's no problem there in the first place. I guess the cool thing is, is you don't have a thumb stud. and Well, you do, but it's integrated inside the freaking frame, right? Yeah. So it basically operates like a thumb stud, and it you know it doesn't have a flipper. Like that's the only thing it really accomplishes. Dude, but... Camillus did a knife like that yes. a couple years ago. Yes. Did they? See, I yes. didn't see it. So I don't it know. isn't even anything new. <laughs> so there we go. So well, actually, way back, I don't know, probably a year and a half, almost two years ago, I had, I was trying to think of a like a lock for a folder that hadn't been done yet, and this is kind of what it was. But this track was all closed except for up here. There was a, a position for that button to pop out. And there was a position down here for the button to pop out. So that's how it would lock close and lock shut. Or lock, yeah, lock open and lock closed. And I saw this and I was like, son of a bitch. They, they beat yeah. me to it. But it's not quite the the same. It just makes the, the knife have like a big old like pivot area it, it is it's not like it does like i said it doesn't fix a problem it's not cool to me no i don't i i didn't think that knife was worthy of an award personally no especially because they're not the first company to do it dude come on they're, they're the same ones that won an award for that carbon fiber frame lock and oh, um I got rid of mine because it lost lock bar tension, mm -hmm. and quite a few other people I know with them, theirs also lost uh, lock bar tension. Yeah. It was a cool idea, but... Yeah, yeah, the Suru, right? Yeah. So look, we're looking at a Browse Blades uh, collaboration of a Strife. <laughs> That's been Turpin design. No, we're, we're looking at a knife that has half its blade missing. Yeah. That's so stupid. I don't know. I it's, mean, I get again that this is a Bob DeMarco tactical kind of thing. Yeah, it's a Bastinelli collaboration, which I mean, I can. I figured he's a fighter. He's he's into the fighting knives, so. Yeah. Eh, doesn't do much. Cool fighting knife, but yeah. So that's it. Um, we had lion steel, but it looks like. So there's, there's one lion place. steel I like. One lion steel I like. Oh, but it's fixed blades? Yeah, those are all just fixed blades. Oh, no. What did you guys think about this knife from Steel Will, the Screamer? No. No? You don't like Steel Will, though, and neither do I, but... Cool. Dude, the peak, the peak of Steel Will was the Modus, and they went downhill since then. Yeah. I think yeah. this is the first design that's kind of interested me since the Cut Jack. It's different. Something it looks like done. a Kershaw to me. Yeah, a little bit. That's all that. Or, or it looks like a Browse. Yeah. But <laughs> every, everything looks like a Browse to you tonight, huh? Yeah. Um, that's actually it for the Knife News Shot Show 2020. Did you guys have any other? Brands? Yeah. What's what? What's up with the Kershaw budget stuff? It's like they bumped 8CR up into the CRKT price range, and all the $20, $25 Kershaw stuff this year seemed like is like 4CR13. Oh, really? I didn't even notice that. Yeah. Let's take a look at the Kershaw site. I was hoping they had a page for just the new knives. They kind of have some interesting stuff this year for me. Um, I mean, I like the Bali song. I think they hit the right price point. It's 14C28N. Yeah, it's cool to see them doing that. Yep, I really I like that. I like the composite uh, dividend. That was the next one I was going to mention I really like. Um, I think that's about it. Let me see if, if this is one of the... Yeah, 4CR14. Yep. What kind of garbage is that? I don't know. Like three, I think like three of their new budget ones this year, 4CR. Look, it's Tom's hands. <laughs> that makes my hands look huge. Yeah. I was going to say, that that's Tom, full-size knife for Tom, not his hands, though. 
I think that's a female hand. It probably is. <laughs> Maybe it is Tom's hand, then. Yeah, that might be my hand. Oh, my God. At, the after effect is a funny little thing. Where was that one? Mm, where'd it go? Did I skip past it, Alex? What, the after effect? I don't know, but oh, click on the, click on that traditional, too. I, I think they made that, but I think that's got, like, 4 CR or something also. I'm pretty sure it does. That one's 8 CR. I'm pretty sure the little slippies were... I pass them? Yeah. I don't even know what 4 CR is. <laughs> Junk. 7 CR. Which is worse. That That's, like, the equivalent to 440A. Ew. Wow. Yeah, I know what 440A is. Why are they getting cheaper? I, that I don't know. Dude, it's it's uh, too bad it's a cool looking knife. Even if they put it in 8CR, guys would buy that like crazy for like 30, 40 bucks. Yeah, right. I, mean, I don't understand. Was 8CR getting too expensive for them? I mean, that that click on the other one. Is that a Barlow looking one also? Yeah, the Culpepper. Yeah, that was the one I saw. Yeah, this and then seven as well. Yeah, which is I don't understand it. But I bet you'll perform a lot better than a case knife. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I get people telling me every day that this case knife is the best steel I've ever used. It never goes dull. Like, yeah, you must not cut forty feet of cardboard. Oh yeah. <laughs> that must not cut anything. <laughs> Whatever. Any other brands that weren't brought up? Uh, let's go to Lion Steel, man. You want to see the Lion Steel? Yes. Well, I'm glad Steve isn't here for this. I would, if he was here, I would still ask to go to Lion Steel. <laughs> Do they have a thing where it says anything new? <laughs> uh, so the thrill. The thrill's the one I like. I like this thing. Yeah. So it's got that integrated pocket clip on like a little traditional design, which is pretty damn cool. When you said let's go to uh, Lion Steel, Paul said let's not. <laughs> uh, and Namaste said 14C28N is to be the new budget steel standard. I agree. That or even twelve C twenty seven would be great. Yeah, but fourteen C twenty eight N is not like it's not really like it's pretty good stuff actually. Yeah, for the, for the price that it costs. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's easy to resharpen. Like it re it resharpens like butter. We also have to look at though. There isn't anybody out there in the on the budget side. They're all running it. They're not running it even close to its real potential. Right. True. Right. You know, it's all coming in like 56, 57, 58. I'd, you know, I'd love for them to bump it up 61, 62. Well, and I know there's some pretty decently expensive kitchen knives that probably have it treated. Maybe up. Uh, up like that that stuff it's in the kitchen so because if i'm remembering correctly isn't that isn't nitro v like kind of like a continuation of this line am uh, i am remembering correctly Jay? i'm not i'm not sure i know the uh i tested the perpetua and that, that thing did really well i figured it would and i have a custom nitro v fixed blade on loan to test right now. My Brian Nadeau dagger is in Nitro V2. Yeah. He likes that stuff. I was almost positive that's a continuation of that CN line from Sandvik. Dude, yeah. the, the, the thing I like about the Nitro V is, I mean, you can almost sharpen it blindfolded, strop it blindfolded, and that thing will whittle hair. Yeah. Oh, really? I Super mean, it comes up so nice. It does. It does. Because I put range. an edge on my, I put an edge on my uh, my Perpetua, and it, it was screaming sharp. Yeah, that 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 Perpetua I have, I love that thing. Yeah. 
So I like this this slip joint, guys. I know you guys go ahead, you know, lay into me, but I actually really like it. I think it's cool. Hey, man, I, I'm not going to knock your choices for, for what you think is cool. No, but I'm okay if you do. But I'm just saying, like, this fucking thing to me is really cool. It's – I like the milling pattern on it. It just – it gives it this really modern look. It's got the really nice, you know, acute tip, you know, nice blade profile, sharpening choils there. The I freaking like that red grind one. goes off. Yeah. I actually like the orange one too. Yeah, I mean, and I don't think they're going to be all that expensive. I mean, it's going to be expensive for what it is. I'm not going to lie. But I think if it's a knife you decide to keep and use, you know, I mean, um, I think it's going to be pretty cool. It's not like a knife you're going to hard use anyways. You, my, my complaint with Lion Steel is they should have stayed with Slapner. They did it yeah. so much better than M390. Their M390 is, I mean, some of it's downright poor. Right. Some of it's okay. At least they're Slapner. You are you know you're buying a knife that's actually going to cut something and not go dull. Right. You know, you're, you're, you're not taking a chance when you're buying one. Well, you know what else they did really good is LMAX. I had a Lion Steel LMAX knife that did really, really good, too. <clears throat> And that's actually as my Spyderco Lion Steel, the little Lion Spy. Dude, that thing cuts so nicely. And that one's even got a convex edge on it, which is pretty funny. It just it, it's it's thick behind the edge too, but it just cuts everything I needed to all the time. I don't I don't understand though if <clears throat> if their L Max is good. Obviously, we don't know like heat, heat treat numbers on that, but. If they can do that well, why can't they do M390 well? They're so similar. Well, so the little Lion Spy, and I'm not like like a hard-use blade kind of guy. Like I don't cut like tons of shit, but that LMAX little Lion Spy, for example, I've cut numerous zip ties with it. I've cut plenty of boxes with it. I've used the hell out of it, and I've owned it probably for two and a half years. And all I ever did was drop it twice. Wow, nice. And yep. it's dropped back so quick, it was ridiculous. That was a cool little knife, too. Yeah. It's a tank. Yeah. I really well, like it. I don't think the picture's up anymore, but the size of most of their M390 blades, if you looked at the grinding pictures they had, the amount of sparks they're throwing <laughs> on the little blades... They they probably aren't done bad to begin with, but they're ruining the heat treat when they're grinding them. They're just overheating them too much. Has anybody tried to like put like three or four edges on one and see what it does? Dude, I had Jack Farm Boys, and I put, I don't know, I think around 12, 13 edges. It still only did like 65 feet working edge maybe. Oh, wow, yeah. And um, I also had LTK as Shuffler. That thing wasn't any better. I I did have I, I had a bolus that did about like the average M three ninety, like a hundred and seventy five, hundred and eighty feet working edge. Yeah. Well, you know, and and out of I mean, I, I just kind of wish it wasn't such a gamble to buy it because the bolus I actually really like that one. Right. Right. Tell me well. Gerald, I was interested after watching your video on the uh, M4 Freak. Mm-hmm. That's crazy that it took that many sharpenings for it to, to get where it needed to be. Yeah, I, I remember BJ sent me the what he got. I think he tested it on the third, second and third edge. And it was low, but it wasn't as low as what I was getting. Like, I noticed when I got it from Kurt... I think it was wearing the fourth edge, and it had a lot of chips and rolls in it. Yeah. I sharpened it. I, you know, Kurt said use it. I tried to take it to work. The first day I got chips and rolls. Uh, I sharpened it, tried to test it. It did horrible. I, I didn't even write down the results. It, it was bad. I kept sharpening it and trying to use it, and like around 10, 11, I started testing it again and recording 
excuse me, recording the results. And yeah, it's crazy the amount of, and not only that though, what, when all those edges weren't performing well, you could tell that it was, it had been overheated quite a bit. It wasn't even sharpening like M4. The stones, I mean, even a 1500 good diamond stone was biting into it way too hard. Yeah. So I need to carry mine a little bit more and cause I'm having the same issues. I need, so mine was on a fresh edge the other day and, uh, I had my brother, my brother was cutting up some chicken and none of our kitchen knives are sharp enough. I said, hold up. And I gave him that knife and had him cut his chicken with, with that knife. He was cutting it on a paper plate. The edge didn't go through the paper plate. Didn't hit the counters. Or anything. <laughs> and there's a fucking roll in it from cutting chicken yeah. on a paper plate. Yes. I mean, the rest of the edge is fine. It's just one small, one spot that's maybe half an inch long that just rolled. Like, come on. Yeah, I'm curious to see how many times you're going to have to sharpen that before it. I need to, I, I, I stopped carrying it as much because it's it's a little big. Not, not the knife itself isn't big. It's just bulky in the pocket. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But I see, I need to start forcing myself to carry that a little bit more and continue to use it so I can figure everything out with that. I still got to finish up the whole ZDP thing. Uh, the guy who sent that to me, that, I mean, that's been like four months in the in the working, if if not more. I got that S90V2 son that I need to test uh, that I've had for like three months. I feel like Steve now. I'm holding onto these knives for so long because like when Brian sent his 10 test blades to me, I put that at the forefront. I was like, I got to get these tested so I can get them back to him. But right. I got to get that. Yeah, look, it's just funny how stuff works out. I've had some people's stuff for a long time that I'm just getting back out to them. I feel bad. But I mean, th- you know, things happen, and before you know it, it, it's it's been months. Yep. Like, the other day I was thinking, I was like, oh, I haven't had that Tucson for too long. I'm starting to think about it. I go back to the messages from the guy who sent it to me. I'm like, God, that was back in November. Yeah. Here we are. I'm going to test it tomorrow. I'm putting it on the podcast right now, so I, I have to test it tomorrow. Mm, so We'll see about that. I got eight more test plays from Brian. <laughs> And we're going to do another video, and hopefully there's no fallout like there was from the first one. <laughs> but, Dude, Like I said, I want to see you do some uh, stability testing and I know, toughness tests. I know that. Brian's cool with me doing that, so I might end up doing something like that. Maybe I'll take the best couple of performers as far as edge retention goes and see what we can – see what I see. With Yeah, see, see, see what happens. Yeah. I'm not sure what I'll do. I got, I got a bunch of zip ties here. So I might throw those on like a broom handle or something and just the way I, I pop zip ties is I, I shove that blade up underneath there and just twist. Nice. And, and that's a lot of lateral stress on on an edge. I would never do that with my nice Max Smith reground native. I mean, you, you, you got to think though, a lot of people do dumb stuff with knives. I mean, yeah. you know what I mean? I, I've, I've seen plenty of people cut zip ties against like a a table or whatever the hell they're on, just run the, the edge right into it with no thought about it. Yeah, I know. It's like they, they, they think that something's not going to happen to their knife because it's steel. You know, they're like, well, it's steel. It should be able to, to take that. Oh, whatever. Well, you know, at the same time, though, people talking about steel being so brittle, I, I think they forget that it is steel. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. You know, your S110V and your Maximate is is not going to just shatter apart because you're using it. Yeah, 100%. Right. Absolutely. I agree with that. You know, and I'm sure you guys have seen it. I know people still talk about that guy who was stabbing drywall with a... (laughs) Or he said he was stabbing drywall with an S110V Manix. And then Triple B went and made a video showing how it wasn't brittle, stabbing that S110V PM2 <laughs> like half the blade into drywall. <laughs> right. I love you that. know. So who knows what that guy was doing to break that Manix in two different places? I love Triple B. There was somebody the other day. So I know that we're kind of out of out of knives to talk about, and we're only at an hour and twenty minutes. So I mean. We'll probably get into some other shit here. Um, 
I've noticed an influx of stupid comments lately. Yeah. And may, maybe it's because my channel's getting bigger, so more idiots are finally finding my stuff. How many subscribers are you at now, Tom? I just crossed 900. Nice, man. I'm almost there. You can to, to almost monetize. Almost. I can almost live stream from my phone, too, because they took that away because they're assholes. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so you used to be able to live stream from your phone with no right. minimum sub requirement. And then, like, as I started doing that, they're like, yeah, you have to have 1,000 subs now. Oh, really? Yeah, you, yeah. Can, you can still do it from a computer with a with a camera hooked up to a computer, but you but can't do it from your phone. Yep. That part sucks. Son of a bitch. So, um, but anyhow, I had some guy comment the other day saying about... It was my Rex 45 video where I was saying that it's, it's so similar to M4. The performance isn't that much different in a production standpoint, right? Even though it's harder, you'll get a little bit better edge retention. But what it's made for is you can take it thin because it's harder. It has better edge stability because of that. And he was saying, well, this guy's an idiot. My Rex 45 is great. If you want to see how good Rex 45 is, check out this guy's video. So I click on it. Guess who it is? Triple B. I was like, yeah, it's probably the videos where he's comparing M4 to Rex 45, yeah, right. but I mean, like, for me, the reason why I say Rex 45 is like M4, my daily use, I've used M4 and Rex 45 at work, I don't, my use, do, I, I don't take advantage of any benefit Rex 45 would have. Bingo. With what I cut daily. Bingo. That's exactly what I told him. I was like... What Sean did is awesome. And the, the funny thing is is that he's putting videos out there or uh, this guy comments that like we don't all talk to each other and know each other and have seen each other's videos, you know? And right. So I was like, well, I guarantee that almost nobody, because I can't say nobody, uh, almost nobody does what Sean just did to those poor knives on a day-to-day -day basis. Nobody's trying to carve out brass with, 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 with a knife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually saw that video. That was actually pretty cool. It, it makes when me I, cringe. The popping sounds. Yeah. yeah or, or cutting nails in half. I mean, look, dude, Sean does a lot of stuff to test what he's doing also. People aren't out there cutting nails in half with a with a knife. <laughs> Except for Steve. And and Brian. Have you seen Brian's bolt test? Yeah, I mean, to, to, to <laughs> test things, but it's not something you're doing for work. No. No. If you've got to cut bolts at work, you're not using your pocket knife to do it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> oh, man. I know. Some of the, the, I also had a guy comment saying uh, it was my top five steals for last year. And I mentioned in that video that I hate D2. D2 is my least favorite steal. And he just comments, I love D2. Like, cool. Good for you. Congratulations. Good for you. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Those are the people that you just don't even respond to. You're like, ah, it's whatever. Yeah, I mean, since I don't do steel testing and stuff, I don't run into that many of those people. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say in, like, the custom collector realm, there is the same stupidity. Oh, I bet. Same stupidity, like... Oh, well, you know, the Shamwari is the best produced knife ever and blah, 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 you know, on and on and on. And people argue like to death over shit when in reality, it's just all subjective. It's, so much ignorance. Yeah. Especially in the custom knife realm, like there, there are a few people out there that are extra impressive as far as like the build quality and the fit and finish work and all that stuff. But, you know, in the end, it's like I've paid $1,000 for knives, and I thought, wow, this knife is really great. I paid, like, $1,800 for a knife, and I'm like, this is all right. You know, like, <laughs> I've paid, like, 200 bucks for a knife. I'm like, holy shit, this thing's fucking awesome. <laughs> like, it's it's just, uh, you know, and... And I wish it could be back like the, the 2013, 2014 era where everybody was more friendly and 
you know, we were all one big community. And if you had something cool, you know, usually the guy who had the expensive knives was going to be like, oh, you know, that's a really cool little Kershaw. I have one of those in my pocket all the time. Yeah. Nowadays, you'll see, you know, it's, oh, that's garbage, you know, like, or somebody like goes out and spends like, a, you know, to them a ton of money, which is like 150 bucks on a ZT or whatever it is. And they're like, oh, you know, I just got this thing. I really love it. And instead of like encouraging these guys to be part of the community and saying, hey, you know, welcome, you know, congratulations on your 0452. That's a great knife. It was really popular. They instead, you know, like, oh, you know, ZT's garbage. That's so like two, three years ago, you know, or whatever. Right. It's just a lot more trash talking. I'm just, that stuff drives me nuts. And in the custom knife realm, it's kind of like, it, it, it gets more catty in the custom knife realm, you know? I, like, it's a knowledge-based thing with you guys and the, the steel cutting. And then, but when you start arguing taste or like who does really like cool stuff better, you know, yeah. because it's more the 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 fad you know like like specters shamwaris are perfect examples that i'll use just because everybody knows what they are i mean there is no way in hell you know like everybody thinks like gareth bull's shamwari if it's a 3.3 .3 or three and a half inch should be like two grand i find that you know hilarious because i have handled a shamwari and it is a very cool knife. It's very nice, but it's it's a cool knife for eight hundred bucks. You know what I'm saying? Like right. that's it's it's just it, it gets everything gets blown out of proportion. So when I've done like other stuff, like I bought that Kalishnikov knife from that guy in uh, Ukraine, that was actually almost more fun to me to get because it was really interesting. It's something new. It's something different. You know, not all the same garbage you hear about every day. So, and for you guys out there that are really considering, you know, like, I'm sh I don't know how many of our listeners are into high-end customs or not, but for some of you guys that are into that, you know, I know Namaste, I think, has some pretty nice high-end stuff. Um, or, But if you're not, don't do it. It's not worth it. <laughs> it's just not worth it. See, I think as more people have come into the hobby, there's more toxicity now. Everybody's yeah. more judgmental. Because everybody has their thing. Yeah, you know, some, guys like the, some guys like the some guys like the rats. Some guys like culture techs. You know, it, yeah. all, it all depends what your budget allows and what you like, and where you see value. Yeah. So I had a question culture in tech here. Guy, actually. From Paul asking, what did you all think of Set and Ada's video ranking manufacturers? I don't know if you guys saw it. I haven't seen it. UG? Yeah, I did. It, he, he does that every year. It's just how he sees them for his use and his testing. I thought... Right. I mean, it's a, it, it's, it's, a, it's a his perspective kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Right. What would you guys think about if I pulled the video up, even though because we're only at an hour and a half... The video is like 25 minutes long. What if you, what would you guys think if I pulled the video up and we watched it and then they had like a reaction to it live? You guys cool with that? I don't think your internet's good enough for that. My Tom. internet is great. <laughs> I'm, it's plenty good. You're yeah. already cutting in and out like a robot. Am I really? To me. Yeah, you, you you started to here the past 10 minutes or so. Okay. Yeah. I could play it. You're, you're, you're like Steve internet quality right now. Oh, you guys look great. The stream looks great. So that's all that matters. That's because we have good internet, Tom. I'm not sure that's how that works, Alex. <laughs> yes. No. But we could. I, Alex basically, he, did, he had some surprising takes. He had Cold Steel as in the top tier. Why not? Um, I, I'm not saying why not. Um. I have I, the so much different stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't care it's what fun. anybody thinks. They 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 make what they want to make, and there's plenty of people that want to buy it. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Not everything they have is for me, but man, it, you, dude, they make so much different. I mean, swords, all, all kinds of shit. Right. They make maces. They you make know? shields. They make 
throwing knives. Oh yeah, dude, they make so many different things that it's insane. So that's actually a company that we're talking about possibly um, bringing into the the shop, and my. They got, I think that would sell good for you guys, Tom. Just not carrying like everything they make, but I'm no. Talking, but there's their lockbacks and stuff yeah, are I'm really good, about, man. I, I said eighty ten, eighty fifteen, uh, code four, recon one right. maybe, tough life. American lawman. American lawman was one I recommended. Um, Dude, I mean, look at look look at what you get from them. The code for the recon one and the American lawman. Mm -hmm. Even at the most expensive places, they're barely over a hundred bucks. You know, the the code four can be had for as cheap as seventy. Yeah, it's S thirty five VN. It's got a good lock on it. It's slim. It's not heavy. Their their heat. You know, their S thirty five heat treat's been consistent. I mean, you you're getting a lot of knife for what you're paying. If you just need a work beater, you really can't beat, you know, their EDC type S thirty five VN stuff. I mean, for the price, it's. You guys want to hear something? I've never sure. owned a cold steel knife. Yeah, I, I've I've I only ever, on. I've only ever handled two. I handled an original recon one when they had like the access lock type of deal going on. One of the real early ones. Yeah, I have one of those in on loan right now from. From Mark, uh, the Sharp Market YouTube channel. Those are pretty cool. And then I had um, a friend of mine bought the the Luzon, the same one that Steve has, that ginormous thing. <laughs> That's actually really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Dude, if you even like the Mannix a little bit, the American Lawman has like almost the identical type of grip. Um but it actually feels a little bit better to me yeah, in the, use. That's the one I wanted. I want, if I can find another one of those in XHP, I'd probably grab one. But I know you, those, those yeah. are just few gotta look. Between. There's plenty of them out there. I don't see them go very often. At least not where I look. I know that there's a bunch out there, though, but I don't know how many people are willing to give them up yet. And because it's discontinued, you know that people are going to ask bigger money for them. Unfortunately, Dude, even, well, what? But, 120 but I, bucks. <laughs> Dude, still though, I I tested an S35, S35 American Lawman. It 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 did fine. You know what I mean? It did like most other good production S35 VN, like 155 feet working edge or whatever. But that thing dropped back great. Yeah, I had no issues with it. I mean, if you want to try one, you you can pick one up cheap. Yeah, true. I got to get my hands on one. I'm hoping we bring well, them in. So if I it's going to be a lawman, you're going to have to put two hands on one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping we bring them in so I can buy one at, at a discounted price. Oh, you need to look for the old mini lawman. They, they it was native mini? five size and XHP. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I'm gonna see it's if I not a mini. mini. It's a, a tom size. It's That's a tom size. It's like six. It's like six and a half inches long. Yeah. Sweet. That's awesome. Tom can put a four finger grip on a Reich hummingbird. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Listen, my hands aren't even that small. I don't, I don't get it. I mean, <laughs> when you put that picture up on Facebook and I circled it, <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. that, that was pretty funny. That was pretty uh, funny. Oh uh, yeah. I can't. I can't even like escape the the tiny hands Tom thing in my personal life now. Oh yes. <laughs> I post a personal picture oh, that's on Facebook. Too funny. For uh, obviously, you guys are, are friends with me on Facebook, uh, but really, none of our listeners are. But. I posted a picture of, of me with some of my work friends uh, and I'm just standing there hands down by my side and Alex comments. He, he screenshots it, zooms in circles, my hands and just posts that in the comments. And I was like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> oh my God. Dave. I was like, how the hell did he hold a, a bowling ball? Yeah, I had to find one where the, the, the finger holes weren't too far apart. Yeah. What do you the, use? Like an eight pound I bowling really, ball? I just picked up one that felt good. I That's what she said. Yep. Yep. Uh, Dave said Tom could put a fit, four finger grip on a ruck. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> it's 
Paul says Tom can four finger grip a lanyard bead. <laughs> 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 oh my god. That's the worst. Speaking of the hummingbird, did you guys see they're making a large one? Are yeah. Really? Yeah. That's cool. It's gonna be like G ten and uh I forgot what blade steel it is, but it's a regular blade. Cool. Yeah, I don't know. I've never really liked anything that I mean, I think some of the stuff they do is cool, but I would there's never been a Reich that I'm like there's never been the Reich knife for me. Wow. And on that note, I'll see you guys in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, Paul says what? why? Someone someone put Reich out of business. Yeah. They make cool you know, knives. They, it, they make they they sell for pretty good money too. I mean, even Jim Skelton has one of those Reich thorns. He likes it. Like they're cool knives. It's just like they're so out there. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. There's nothing that I saw that Reich ever. It's always too much. Yeah. Whatever it is, it's too much of it. I agree. I'm still uh, gonna say that Riot is probably the best Chinese manufacturer out there for me. Oh, fuck. hands down. Yeah, but I I am very impressed with Wii stuff now, and it's, it's very weird for me to say that. Have you gotten a Wii in hand yet? The only one I have is that Phonetic Edge uh, that I have, the Omen, but I just put that up for sale. They're really nice, actually. I was yeah. I'm impressed by the build quality. I think I'm gonna buy that fancy synergy. I think I'm gonna get it, um, and I th think I'm gonna enjoy it. I just felt like everybody. I've always been this. I'm not the Chinese knife collector kind of guy, and I think like without really buying one, and if I buy one, it has to be something I like. Is what I always said. And that's the only Wii that I've said, well, okay, I might finally pull the trigger on some. Yeah. That synergy is really, really up my alley. <clears throat> Absolutely. That, that is a cool knife. Yeah. Um, I did want to remind everybody, I'm, I'm wearing it today, but we do have a merch store. Oh, here we go. I'm just, listen, you just got to plug the merch, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pl yeah. Plug away, uh, dude. If you make a, if you make a tiny hands Tom shirt, I'll buy oh, one. Oh, dude, I did. Oh, I'm gonna have to get with Dave to have. Um... Make small hand with like a big old like cold steel in it or something. Yeah, dude. I need to get with Dave and see if uh, the lady that made the what was the other one? Uh, HRC matters shirt with like the knife and like the lips on it or some whatever. I forget what that design was. But if we can get a tiny hands Tom shirt going, I'm gonna see if he can he can get me hooked up. Dave, I know Dave's in the chat right now. Um, Let's get some oh, questions while you're, from our while listeners. You're on the, while you're on the thing too, who um who has Brian's test knives right now? The four. Oh me me, I haven't gotten around to testing them yet. I have all of them. I need to know how much coffee you want. Why you bring that up, G? I was just curious if you'd done anything with them yet. Not yet. Um, they all are very nice. And the, if I'm remembering correctly. Dude, what, what, I, I don't even remember. What steels did we pick again? Uh, K390. K390. Z-Wear. Yep, um, Z-Wear. M390 is actually 204P. I think it was ABL. I think. At like sixty one or sixty two, I can't remember. I yeah, think. I just don't even. It's been so long since we talked. I don't even remember all all the four of them that we picked. I've never even had K three ninety, like, being sharpened. So I, I'm excited to to give K three ninety a shot. That's gonna be the first one I I test. Oh, I I I, I really like K three ninety. He had that one. He he treated by all, all four of those were he treated by Peters. Um. That one was testing, he said, at like 64, 65 at the handle, but like 66, almost 67 out by the edge. Which is you perfect. see this, Tom? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a man. That's a man's hand. You see that? Here we go. All right. 
You see that? Yeah. Those are hands. Look. Look. Yeah, I'm my, my hands uh, swallow a 940. That's okay. Listen, I'm not saying I got big hands. I'm just saying I don't have tiny hands. So this is way bigger than a 940. Oh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> on to the next topic. Let's see. Uh, Namaste, let's get some questions, guys. Namaste wanted me to look up the Wii Kite Fin. The Wii what? Kite Fin. Kite Fin. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. I'm seeing a bunch of folding karambits. Well, that's great. That's not it, though. I, I, I actually had one knife that I literally lost my shit over. It's a small knife, but I'm trying to snag one right now from Blade Gallery. Um, so look up his, and then I'll have one to kind of look at that okay. I think you guys will really like, too. I can't find it, Namaste. I'm, I was on Instagram. That's why. So it's not out yet. Let's see here. The kite fin. Was it the most recent? Oh, yeah. That's sweet. Pull it over here. Yeah, this is badass. Check that thing out. Oh, that's good looking. Yeah, I like that. That's actually really nice looking. Ooh, I like the clip. I like it, too. Although, I think that's just a Civivi clip, isn't it? I'm pretty sure. That's mm. similar. Like, it's the same style. Obviously, they didn't. They don't drill the holes out like this. But Very, very cool. That knife, I really like. I dig that. 3.24. 3. Damn. Very nice. Paul. All right, since we're on Instagram... Mm -hmm. Stay on it after you're done with that one. Okay, go for it. Uh, Cozy Steam Camp. Which one? So right there, uh, second row, first one. This one right here. That's the one. I, that's the one I'm trying to get. My hands oh, on there's right your now. comment. Take my money. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. I've been trying to snag this. So I message Kosi directly. I'm like, hey, man, I'll this right now. Like, I love that thing. It's a front flipper. Mm, cool. Um, and it's Westinghouse Micarta because I'm on that stupid kick right now. <laughs> and um, he's like, I'm sorry. Blade Gallery bought up my whole freaking uh stack of knives so then i messaged blade gallery and then they said that they're not sure if this one was built for somebody or if not but if not then i'm gonna buy the one on the top row that's in green and brown micarta this one or green and black micarta yeah that one so that's cool dude that is a really sweet little knife i, I really like that. like that it's simple Small. I know not everybody's gonna dig the 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 Christian mark. Um, I'm a Christian, so it doesn't bother me one bit. Uh, but the knife itself is just simple, elegant, and just perfect, man. I love this stuff. I like that one a lot. I like his knives. Yeah, yeah, his knives are really good. He's starting to get uh, more traction lately, man. Like the last like six months to a year, yeah, he's becoming a lot more popular. But I'm hoping for one without the uh, without the thumb stud because mm -hmm. I want the front flipper. Yeah, for sure. But the green and the the Westie were my favorites, so I don't know. I guess that top one uh, with the burgundy micarta wouldn't be bad either. Yeah, that one's kind of cool. It's different. Because all of them have the matching uh, pivot colors in micarta. Yeah, that's a cool touch. Yeah. Very, very nice. Uh, Paul says, do you all get into any other stuff like pry bars, nux, utility knives? I don't. No. Nope. Not, not my thing. I consider buying like a fancy utility knife, but... Yeah, me too. Never got into it. 
who who is the custom knife maker who makes one? Is it um Snacks Tan? No, not only him, but uh Redford. Yeah, Todd Rexford. Yeah. Yeah. He he came out with one first and then Snacks made an integral one. Yeah, I like the the Rexford one. And it's not cr that's the rock, right? I think that's what it's called, yeah. Yeah. I think the Snacks Tan one's better though. Yeah. Give me one second. Yeah, the, the Rexford rut's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, any other co questions, guys? Before we wrap this one up kind of early? I didn't think we were going to get through the Blade Show stuff as fast as we did. Well, there was a whole lot more, Tom, that you missed. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh... Um, normally... Knife News has everything on there. One of the nah, things. Is... They never... Oh, I know a knife we didn't talk about that I wanted to talk about. Okay. The new Shiro F3 NL. Yeah, they redesigned it. Yep. That's actually really cool the way they did it. They gave it the touch like the, uh, like how they changed the 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 the, the, uh, or the neon or hation. They gave the same changes to the F3, nice. which was really cool. So it's got the jimping, just like the the Neon Zero does. They changed the blade shape to be the same. They got that really tight kind of gritty carbon fiber, and then they put some traction on the bottom for the grip. And it's got a gear backspacer too, which is really sweet. I wish they had more pictures. And it's eight hundred and ninety-five bucks. That's not crazy. No, man, it's the same price as the the standard F three, but it's got some new upgrades, you know, the which F is really cool. F three doesn't do any. I don't like the, the F three personally. It's a little bit too big. It's not that big. Three point seven five inches. I did like the F ninety five, which is real similar, right? It's it, actually the F three is like even a hair bit smaller when I compared oh, right. it. Yeah. I think it's only a matter so. of time before I buy a Shiro, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be another F ninety five, like the one I tested. Yeah. I really do like them. Yeah, I do too, man. I liked that Hatian light too, but it, believe it or not, it felt a little too small. Yeah. Yeah, it's the only thing I didn't like about it too. It's just a. It's like a hair too small for what I'd want to use every yeah, day. Exactly. It felt three point three inches is pretty good though. It, it felt dainty in my hand. It didn't feel like it. I know it can do anything I want it to do. It just didn't feel like it. The the zero would probably feel a lot better. Yeah. Because I had a Hati on like the old school one, that red carbon fiber one I had, mm -hmm. and when I I sold it to get the the zero, and I like the zero a hundred percent better. But I, I prefer an all titanium knife, you know, like to. I'm starting fiber. to end up like G. I don't really like titanium that much. I don't know yeah. why. I'm changing. Yeah, I've just got you know I'm getting tired of carbon fiber. To tell you the truth, <laughs> <laughs> if it's the right carbon fiber, I'm I'm okay with it. Like this has like nice quality carbon fiber on it, so I'm good with that. But yeah. like the overuse of carbon fiber. You know, it's just what? It's just too much sometimes. Oh man! All right, boys. Uh, All right. Paul had one question before we get off. Um, what happened to the customized wrap folders from Christmas? No. Um, mine is done. It just needs sharpened still. Um, what about you guys? I never did one. Okay. Uh, Mine's got a polished <laughs> edge on it. That's that's great. You did a great job on that one, Alex. Yep. I actually haven't sharpened mine yet, so I can't I can't make fun. You you have an actual edge on yours. You're just a cutting tool. Mine's not right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Hey, look, man. I mean, in, in le unless you guys are totally against it, I'll, I'll get one and do it, and then maybe we could just do like a podcast giveaway or something. Yeah, it'd be cool. I'm down with that. Yeah, but then you guys were talking about making like a horrible ergonomic, like, you know, like 
monster of a rat. No, mine's usable. Mine's not too bad. That's not pretty, but it's usable. I know Steve had one too that I wanted to get Steve back on here for an episode. Right. So we could all kind of show. I don't know if we'd want to ship them around like we did it, with, like we planned on it, but we'll figure something out. Okay. Paul, keep reminding us if we keep forgetting. He says he's just going to stop asking, but you need to keep reminding us. <laughs> oh, man. It's been, it's been crazy the past month or so. Yeah. So, Me too. Um, as long as life doesn't get in the way yet again, we should be back in two weeks. I'm going to see if we can get the Tiny Hands Tom, Tiny Hands, uh, Tom shirts going. Yep. I think that would be cool. Everybody needs to use that hashtag on Instagram. Yeah. Tag me in it. Tag me in it and use the hashtag. Gerald yes. sneaks it in every single post that he makes. Yep. I always forget about it, but one day <laughs> I was scrolling through it. I was like, I'm looking through your hashtags. And I'm like, tiny hands time at the end. I'm like, you son of a bitch. Dude, if you type it in and hit reasons, I'm not the only one that's using it. Oh, really? Yeah. Sweet. I'm going to have to go through and look at all that. That's cool. I'm a viral hashtag. My, my <laughs> small hands are a viral hashtag. Sick. Oh, man. All right. So we will see you guys in two weeks. Uh, as always, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you to the Twitch chat for being um, lively tonight. I, I mean, it was mostly Paul, as always. There was, there were some stretches of like 20 straight comments from Paul, just keeping it going. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, are... and thanks for your, uh, I hit, oh, I'm like at 500 and I think 30 or 40 subscribers. So nice. thanks guys. Absolutely. Go for Alex is extremely underrated. You, you all need to get, uh, get Alex up there at over a yeah. thousand subs. Does such a good job. Yeah. You do. You do. You're one of the be best reviewers on YouTube. I swear. Well, that's way too kind, but thank you very much. You're way more in-depth than other guys. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm getting more and more anal as the days go by, too. That's fine. It's 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 teaching me a lot. It's it's better than, than the guys that glaze over all the glaring issues. So. Yeah, but it's hard sometimes because you don't want to, like, rip makers and you don't want to, like, start shit, you know? I try to right. keep my reviews and videos on a positive note. And I try to be, like, fair on the nitpicks and stuff like that. I try not to be, you know, one of those. Yeah. Um, but there are, I will say this, there are some knives that I'm, I have to uh, say to the maker, I'm sending this back so you can fix it so I don't rip you a new one. <laughs> <laughs> I give you the opportunity to fix it. So I have a couple of those knives I really wanted to review, but that needs some love before uh, they do. Paul, so, yeah. Paul says you have a lot of unique knives. You're a spider comb matriarch in a room full of delicas. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's, that's pretty cool. Uh, I've, I've never been told that kind of uh, thing before. Yeah. Um, you would definitely get a second date up with me, Paul. You're going to boost his ego, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. I think that's time to call it. It's, I know it's a shorter episode, but uh, we'll come a little bit more prepared to the to the next one and have a better topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have so, my usual shit next absolutely. time, and then I might see if I can get a guest. Okay. As long as we're all good. Lee wants to be on again already, but I think we got to wait a couple episodes for Lee. Yeah, no. <laughs> we're, we're, we need some. We need to give everybody else a turn. At least, at least he returned the knives. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Next episode, will we get into that? <laughs> no, we're not going to get into that on podcast. Okay. All right. So, anyhow, guys, see you guys in two weeks. Um, if the plan changes at all, we'll be sure to update you on Instagram. Go follow at Sharp Talk Podcast. I think it's either at Sharp Talk or at Sharp Talk Podcast. I can't remember. Either way, you'll find us on Instagram. That's where all the updates are on if we're having an episode or if we're not. So. Thank you guys for tuning in and see you guys all in two weeks. Sounds good. See you guys. All right.